Creating a GRS vacuum or pressure form surgical guide using a 3D printed GRS model will replicate the precise orientation, position, and depth of a dental implant as designed when using implant planning software. To begin, make sure the printed GRS surgical model has been properly trimmed and that all implant cylinders or holes printed in the model are free from debris. Utilize a dental probe to validate that the bottom of the hole can be reached. If any distortion or hindrance is noted, Utilize a 2.35 millimeter or 3.30 second drill to open the cylinder to the correct diameter. This can be accomplished by either rotating the drill bit by hand or using a lab handpiece with light pressure on a very low speed. Once the cylinder is clear, insert the locator pin. If the locator pin shaft is too long for a specific application and requires adjustment to maximize surgical access, simply remove the locator pin from the model and cut the shaft using a separating disc. Once the shaft of the locator pin has been cut, remove any burrs created during the cutting process in order to ensure smooth insertion into the surgical model. Once the shaft length adjustment has been completed, Place the GRS surgical ring on top of the locator pin, paying special attention that the internal retention features on the surgical ring are positioned to engage the locator pin. It's critical that the internal retention features of the surgical ring are in this position and firmly rest on the circular platform of the locator pin. By design, placing the internal retention features in this position will provide the retention necessary to secure the drill sleeves during surgery. Once the GRS surgical ring is affixed on the locator pin, simply place the protection cap on top of the surgical ring, then reinsert the assembly into the GRS surgical model. The GRS surgical guide assembly is now complete and is ready for vacuum or pressure forming. The vacuum and or pressure forming process used to create a GRS surgical guide is no different than current protocols utilized in most dental offices and labs when making many common dental oral appliances. Begin by spraying just the model with a silicone separating medium and reinserting the GRS vacuum forming assembly into the printed model. Then, simply affix a 1.5 mm to 3 mm plastic sheet into the heating element platform in either a vacuum or pressure forming machine and allow the plastic to heat for the recommended time. Activate either the vacuum or pressure forming feature of the unit and the subsequent forming process will unite the now moldable plastic with the GRS surgical guide components. Once the process has been completed and removed from the unit, apply a free spray to the newly formed surgical guide for increased adaptation and contraction of the plastic to the model and GRS surgical guide components. The rough surgical guide is now ready to be trimmed. The final processing and trimming of the surgical guide will follow many of the current protocols used when finishing a vacuum or pressure formed oral appliance. Begin by separating the unwanted plastic from the dental model. By following a predetermined line around the model, usually a few millimeters below the free gingival margin in a partially edentulous case, or established by anatomic landmarks in a patient that is fully edentulous, the surgical guide quickly begins to take shape. Once the outline is created, 
a separating channel is cut in the remaining plastic and removed, leaving only the rough surgical guide on the model. Now, by using a fluted or carbide lab burr, remove the excess plastic material that covers the protection cap. The protection cap is a single-use item, so much of the protection cap will be consumed during this process. Once completed, there should be no plastic covering the protection cap. The surgical guide should then be removed from the model taking care not to deform the plastic during the removal process. The locator pin should be removed at this time from either the surgical guide or surgical model in order to gain access to the protection cap. The protection cap can now be removed with light pressure by inserting a narrow dental instrument or the shaft of a lab burr or disc through the underside of the GRS surgical ring, which will allow the protection cap to simply pop out. Caution should be taken to avoid contact with the internal retention features of the surgical rings. The final excess plastic surrounding the GRS surgical ring should be removed by using coarse, medium, and fine polishing wheels. The entire surgical ring should be visually clear from any plastic of the surgical guide. The plastic should be trimmed so it is flush with the upper surface of the GRS surgical ring and care should be taken not to compromise the inner surfaces of the ring. The surgical guide should then be removed from the model, taking care not to deform the plastic during the removal process. The remaining outer surfaces of the surgical guide should then be trimmed using burrs, discs, and wheels to maximize retention allow for the ease of placement inside the mouth while also providing a comfortable fit for the patient. Once the GRS surgical guide has been completely finished, Place the guide back on the model to confirm fit and function. Then, remove the surgical guide and liberally wet the entire surgical guide with water and place back on the model. It is critical to wet the internal surfaces of the surgical ring prior to the insertion of the initial GRS surgical sleeve in order to provide lubrication and to prevent any unwanted distortion of the internal retention features. By wetting all surfaces, this will simulate a surgical environment and will provide essential information regarding the fit and function of the GRS surgical guide and overall GRS surgical system. The initial insertion and removal of the drill sleeve usually requires more force, so it is critical to wet all surfaces of each surgical ring in the surgical guide and insert and remove a test drill sleeve two to three times to ensure proper retention. Once retention and fit is confirmed, insert a GRS surgical sleeve with an internal diameter of 2.35 millimeters or less which will usually coincide with the diameter of the initial pilot drill to be used in surgery. Once the GRS surgical sleeve has been seated completely, simply insert the initial pilot drill with a loose fitting drill stop through the GRS surgical sleeve until it reaches the bottom of the 3D printed hole in the model. If any binding is noted when inserting a drill into the drill sleeve or if the drill cannot reach the bottom of the 3D printed hole, then use a slightly larger diameter GRS drill sleeve until the drill reaches the bottom. Once confirmed the drill has reached the bottom, firmly tighten the set screw of the GRS drill stop. Now, 
Remove the drill with the affixed drill stop from the model and place into the GRS depth gauge with the drill stop secured within the drill stop channel. By rotating the knob located on the GRS depth gauge, the slider is then adjusted to lightly engage the tip of the drill. The resulting measurement found on the upper shell of the depth gauge represents the exact length and position to affix a GRS drill stop on the drill in order to precisely replicate the desired osteotomy. This final measurement is accurate to 0.1 millimeter and can be used to position all remaining drill stops on subsequent drills of a surgical drill sequence that is required for a specific implant. Furthermore, when utilizing the GRS adjustable depth gauge in combination with a GRS surgical guide and model, the precise real-time positioning of each individual drill stop provides a visual and physical confirmation of an accurately defined osteotomy as designed when using implant planning software. Once completed, place all drills with the affixed drill stops and drill sleeves used in this process into the GRS surgical cassette and sterilize according to current infection control guidelines. Finish by disinfecting the GRS surgical guide by following the guidelines applicable to all removable oral appliances. The GRS surgical guide is now ready for clinical use and will provide for the most accurate, precise, and convenient dental implant placement available today.